Fala galera da GFight, Diego Riba direto de Las Vegas para uma conexão com Toronto no Canadá. Sean Strickland, the UFC champion. Thank you for your time. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? Good, good. Better now. Um, okay, first things first. Uh, the last interview that I did to you, with you, uh, I was asking you, was right before uh, your fight with Adesanya, and I asked you if you were ready to become champion, become way more famous. Did it happen? Do you feel that you're way more famous now when you walk on the streets? Um, yeah, maybe a little bit more, but I, I think my I think my base, my fans were always, I don't know, I think I always had the fans. Now it's just a little bit louder, but yeah, no, life hasn't changed much. Dude. My bank account's bigger. That's cool. I make more money. That's nice. But yeah, life, life hasn't changed much. Yeah, but do you, do you feel like... Uh, Do you like this kind of spotlight? Like, for example, since you have way more fans, like, especially if you win again, you're gonna, your fan base is gonna increase and get bigger, like being recognized, taking pictures, photos, autographers, and everything else. Is it is something that you like? You know, I'm a quiet person. I kind of yeah. like, I kind of like the quiet. So I, I appreciate when somebody recognizes me and is a fan of the sport because these people pay my paycheck, but you know, I'm definitely more of a quiet, quiet person. Yeah. I, I see that. Uh, Sean, it's interesting. Now that America has, there are three American champions right now in UFC, you, John Jones and Sean, Sean O'Malley. Yeah. And you all are, are completely different. All of you are different and all, and all of you have like a, let's say a big fan base in the US, all of you represent different kind of, let's say different kind of Americans. Yeah. But how do you see your legacy? What the message, when you look to your legacy, what the message you want to keep? How, how do you want to keep your image when you retire? What the, the legacy you want to build? You know, I, I don't think with me and my fan base, it's ever really been about me fighting. Again, I think my fan base likes me because I'm one of the few champions who, you know, I'm not trying to get the Nikes, the Chinese check mark. You know, I'm one of the few champions who are like, hey, you know what, man? Like, especially here in, in Canada, you know, when, when Rudeau sees bank accounts, when all this shit goes on, you know, George St. Pierre never stood up and, and said a damn thing for Canada. Izzy never stood up and said anything for Australians. So I, I think that my legacy as a, as a champion is is one for the people, you know, is and that's kind of – That's the legacy I'd like to have. Perfect, perfect. Let's move on and talk about your fight right now. You're fighting Vickers Duplessis, and he's a strong, strong guy, and he has a lot of finishes in his fights. Uh, skill by skill, skill by skill, how do you match up this fight against him? You know, I think I'm better than him. I think um, I think I'm faster. My timing's better. I think I think I'm better everywhere, you know. Drikas the thing with Rodriguez, he's such an unorthodox fighter that it, you know, it, you have to, you have to try to use your brain to figure it out. And, you know, but on the, the flip side of that, say, I can't figure him out. Well, guess what? Now we're just in the pocket fighting and I think I'm better there too. So, you know, I think I have the tools anywhere it goes to win. Okay. When, when you look at your record and his record, is it fair to say that deep waters, like longer fights are better for you? Um, you know, I've done a lot of five round fights and, uh, that fourth and fifth round. I like the third round, um, gives you time to really settle in and, and enjoy the moment. Well, I guess you could say, so, you know, if I go in there and hit him and he drops, I knock him out round one. Great. But if that doesn't happen, well, we'll just keep going. Okay. When you see the fight week, when you have a, um, a, a fight that is scheduled already. When you see the fight week, the way you approach the game, do you prefer going to the fight week having this kind of bad blood with a rival? Or no, you know, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever had bad blood with anybody I've ever fought. Uh, Dracus isn't one of them. We are fucking two men. We both said some stupid shit. He challenged me to fight. I said, yeah, yeah. I think I think we respect each other more. I, you know. How many people in the UFC, like, especially these fucking Americans, you man, they would have, 
the moment I hit them, they would have called the cops. They would have fucking arrested me. They would have wanted, you know, they would have wanted the fight not to happen. But, you know, he was a fucking man about it. He, uh, he even took the, he even took some of the blame for it. So, you know, I want to say we had bad blood. I mean, we had, which can be a fucking war, but, you know, I wouldn't say I need bad, bad blood to have a war. Okay, okay. No, I, I understand. And, and I saw the video, I guess, was you have seen better. And you guys looks like in good terms, right? Yeah, you know, again, we're just fucking, we're two fucking men, you know. We're two fucking men who are going to fight each other. You know, that, like, you, you can't, you can't, you can't shame somebody for fucking telling you, hey, let's fight, and then you fighting him, and then it's like, oh, why did you do it? Well, because he asked me to. And I, I think that's kind of where he's at, too. Got it. Yeah. So when you look back, uh, would you have done something different if you could? No, man, I, I never live in regrets. I don't live in the fucking past. That's when, uh, yeah, the moment you start living in the past and what I should have done or didn't do, your life just becomes way more complicated. Got it. Uh, he said that you did DM him after all the altercation and – What did he what did he say? How how was the conversation? Uh, he, he was fucking cool, man. I just asked him, you know, that pretty much I want this fight to happen. And I know you want this fight to happen. And uh it's nothing personal. I understand that shit gets carried away, but like that's kind of a line for me. And and you know, I think I think it's a line for most people. I, I don't think I don't think it's unreasonable for me to say that. And he was cool. You know, he, he was just fucking around, and, and I know he was just fucking around. So, yeah, it was just fucking good, man. It was a good conversation, and, you know, it's, we left off with, you know, to the death on Saturday. That was that was, that was was the end result was, hell, yeah, we respect each other, but let's try to fucking kill each other. Like good old days, right, in Brazil when they used to do that. Yeah, that's it, but that's how it should be, you know. You fucking... All this marketing, selling fights, it's part of the game. You got to do it. But at the end of the day, man, it don't matter what you say. It's going to be a fucking war. I understand. I understand. Uh, so do you think there's a line that cannot be crossed when, in terms of... Uh... No. no, of course not. I mean, it just comes down to the kind of person you want to be. So, you know, Sean O'Malley, that fucking little cunt, he was the one that instigated it. And I think Dracus just jumped on it because, like, Sean O'Malley started it. Um, but there are no lines. There are no lines. It just comes down to, you know, and I'm sure Brazilians know this all too well. What you say has consequences. Yep. That's just how it works for me too. For me too. What, what I say has consequences and what I do have consequences. If they said, Hey Sean, you know, you're going to go to jail for a few months. You're the fight's not going to happen. If you do this. I would have done and accepted that consequence. So, you know, accepting consequences on both sides is, is very important. I understood. understood. So when you look back to everything that the altercations that you had with, let's say, Kobe or Sean Mali or even young Gary, uh, if they tell you, I don't want you to talk about this because maybe it's a, it's, it's a crossing line for me. Is there something that you are able to discuss or whatever it yeah, is? You know, If Sean O'Malley messaged me and, and he said, hey, you know what, like, can you not? I, I would respect that. You know, I would, I would respect that as a man, you know. Um, with Ian Gary, what made it worse was I made the post, but by him, by his response of I'm going to fucking sue you, take that shit down. Like the moment you, you know, that's that's when I said, okay, well, time to double down, motherfucker. You don't tell me what to fucking do. Like, the way he came at me, he didn't come at me like a fucking man. He came at me like a fucking woman. You know, his chick was probably the one writing the message. If he would have came at me like a man, you know, shit would have been a little different. But, you know, here we are. Can I ask you something? Uh, do you have, like, a coin in your hand that you're... Uh... Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm just fucking fidgeting, dude. Life, dude. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Uh... Dude, I, do, I do a lot of these fucking interviews, man. It gets uh, They get long in the tooth. Yeah, it looks like I'm the last one, right? I'm sorry yeah. for that. I oh, know yeah, you're... No, it's all good, bro. It's just fucking days and days. Of this yeah. All fight week, bro. I think I've probably done like 23 interviews. Yeah, I heard about it. Uh, talking about, again, your your life changing. Now you you're a homeowner. You drive a Tesla, it looks like, finally. 
and you have a lot of uh, your uh, social media profiles are verifi verified right now with the blue sticker, the blue mark. Live street is treating you very well, right? Yeah, man. I drive like 10 miles to the gym. You know, fucking it makes sense not to have to get gas, not to go out to fucking deal with the homeless in Vegas. And I've got to get fucking, you know, potentially stabbed. It's funny. Right down my right down my sh the street, there was a fucking carjacking. I mean. So, you know, I don't got to go to gas stations anymore. That's nice. Perfect. Uh, two last questions very quickly. Uh, you know, I'm from Brazil. So in Brazil, there is something about the, your altercation with Dricos that became very, very famous in Brazil because the kids you were telling to uh, move, oh, they're yeah. Brazilians. They're Brazilians. They're uh, Gilbert Burns kids. And I did talk to Burns right after the, the whole thing. And he was happy about it. He was like respectful. He asked me to move my kids. And how long, how much time did you have to plan this or to, when you saw the kids, oh fuck, move them and then. You know, I think, I think the real story is I think Gilbert Burns has done that once or twice because his kids know exactly what to do. <laughs> I think, I think it's, I think Gilbert Burns has been in a cookout or two when all of a sudden he fucking, oh yeah, I got thanks, Lance, I'm playing shit. I, I think uh, I think his son has been a cookout or two, where fucking Gilbert Burns has probably fought an uncle or something. So, yeah, they knew what to do, man. Yeah, Gilbert, Gilbert Burns has always been a fucking good dude. He's a fucking legend. He's a fucking warrior. So, you know, I'm I'm happy I didn't piss him off because he's such a good dude. No, actually, I saw the kids. They were they kind of had fun. They enjoyed watching oh, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, they're fucking. They love fighting, man. You know, he brings his kids to fights. And they're they're into it. They're fucking into it, man. They're uh, yeah. I know it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome seeing how much they enjoy MMA. Awesome. Do you have any prediction for this fight, Sean Strickland? No, man. As of always, five round war, five round war. They will be blood. You know, all my predictions has always been the same. We're in there. We're dick to dick. We're nose to nose, and we're fighting. Perfect. My last question. Uh, I did watch your podcast with Devon. Mm -hmm. uh, Really good, really good. That was the first time it looks like we could see you, like, let's say I'm going to use, like, the the real Sean, like, the first time you could oh, no, dude, I, people spoke openly. But I'm, I've always been open. I mean, if you look at I did one with Ariel Hwani, you know, the, the, the MMA tourist. And uh, I've never I've never hid my past or who I am, you know. Just I have no, I have no, like, I'm not. I'm not Colby Covington. I'm not a fictional character. You know, I know where who I am on my sleeve. I understood. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Sean. You know how that works. How that works. I'm gonna ask you to send the message, the prediction for Brazilian fans why they should watch your fight last this Saturday. All righty. To my fans in Brazil, to the UFC fans that don't even like me in Brazil, check out my fight. We're going to have a fucking war for you guys. We're going to fucking get it done.